While commissioning his disciples to go and preach his gospel, Jesus said, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Later in that conversation, Jesus added, He who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Now the lesson is clear. Jesus demands loyalty. We must be on his side. We must be militant. We must be bold. It is unacceptable for us to hide our allegiance in the hope we will be spared by our enemies. There is no room for covert operations in the battle with Satan. We are required to boldly proclaim, I am on the Lord's side. Master, here am I. Now, if we are unwilling to express our sympathies before men, Jesus said he would deny us before his Father in heaven. We cannot be saved if we're ashamed of our faith. We can't live spiritually if we hide our allegiance in an attempt to save our physical lives. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, What does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. And when we talk about confession, some misunderstand, thinking that we must confess ourselves as sinners. Now, while such an acknowledgement is certainly necessary, and I think a part of repentance, it is not what is under consideration here. As Paul wrote, we must confess the Lord Jesus. And this is what Peter did in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus had asked his disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And men were wrong. They, they said that Jesus was John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah or another prophet. But then Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? In verse 15. And we are told that Simon Peter responded, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, is revealed here by Jesus as the foundation upon which he would build his church. In Acts chapter 8, we have recorded the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. As Philip preached the gospel to him, the eunuch asked, What hinders me from being baptized? Acts 8 and verse 36. In verse 37, Philip answered him, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And the eunuch responded in that same verse by saying, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In the first century, Men were persecuted for confessing the name of our Lord. Stephen was killed for his faith, as revealed in Acts chapter 7. We're told in Acts chapter 12 that Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, verses 1 and 2. In Acts chapter 5, the Jewish leaders put the apostles in prison, and the high priest in verse 28 said, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? But consider Peter and the other apostles' answer. We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be the prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins verses 29 through 31. So, are you willing to confess the Lord Jesus? Are you willing to say before all men like Peter, like the eunuch, and like the host of heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Your soul depends upon just such a confession.